Friends, today I'm going to tell you the story of a very iconic book. It's called as Diva Swapna. Diva Swapna in English would mean daydreaming. This book was written by Gijubai Badeka, um, originally in Gujarati in 1931. The very next year, it was translated into Hindi by the great Gandhian and educationist Kashinath Trivedi. This book is almost 90 years old. It is also India's greatest and most original contribution to pedagogy in the last century. Gijubai was a contemporary of Gandhi and like Gandhi, he was a lawyer. He went to South Africa for two years, returned back and started practicing law in the High Court in Bombay. He didn't like that profession and just then Narend Bhai was born to Gijubai, his son, his eldest son. And he became very deeply involved in rearing and bringing up Narend Bhai. And that's when he looked around who were the best pedagogues. The best educationists in the 20s, 1920s, 30s was obviously Maria Montessori. She was a world figure and Kichubai studied her works very deeply. Kichubai's great contribution, however, was to adapt Montessori to Indian conditions. He was an original. He differed with Montessori on many scores. He said, uh, uh, the cultural matrix of India is so rich that the Montessorians would not appreciate it. So this is the imaginary story of a teacher, his name is Lakshmi Shankar, who is very pained by what he sees in the schools. Uniform, assembly, prayers, gong, bell, exams, textbooks. And uh, he says many of them are rituals whether your uniform is of red color or white color or green color, it has no impact on your learning or comprehension. He was very clear on that score. And anyone who heard such an original thought at that time uh, considered Lakshmi Shankar to be a crackpot, a nut. But those were British times and there was a British education officer who heard Kijubhai out Lakshmi Shankar out and he said, look, my friend, you're talking about very radical ideas, great reforms. Well, what I'll do is that I'll give you class fourth and you go and teach it for a year and I will not come between you and your teaching methodology. But after one year, the kids will give, have to give exams. Otherwise, I will lose my job. And Lakshmi Shankar takes up this challenge. He has, a, he has read tomes on education. He has read about philosophy of education, the sociology of education, and armed with all his highbrow through theories, he enters class fourth the next day. And what he experiences, he is in for a shock. It was like a fish market. The kids were growling at each other, shouting, throwing, pelting stones at each other. There was such a dun din in the class, it was like a fish market. And Lakshmi Shankar, to bring about a semblance of peace in the classroom, he says, children, close your eyes and, and chant Om. Lakshmi Shankar thought this would instill a sense of peace in the classroom. Now to Guruji, the teacher is chanting Om, but the, but the naughty boys are making cat calls. Now this did it. He had not expected anything like this. He was in for a shock. Now the book says that Lakshmi Shankar is pacing up and down until late at night. And he's very deeply pained. And he's thinking of ways, how can I reach out to children's hearts? Well, the next day, Lakshmi Shankar goes to the classroom and he says, kids, you have a holiday. Now, holiday is a magical word. No matter what school, uh, what label, a holiday is a holiday. All kids love a holiday. And uh, the kids start running outside the classroom. And then Lakshmi Shankar is standing right at the door and he pleads with them. He just folds his hands, pleads that, well, if you allow me, I would like to tell you a story which I read as a child. Now, children are very good judges of their teachers. Uh, and they said, oh, this is a nice old man. 
he has given us a holiday and he is wanting to tell us a story. So let's listen to his story. And there are three lines in the book that there was a king who had, who had um, seven kingdoms, palaces, and there is pin drop silence. The kids sit very quietly and three hours pass. Uh, the gong rings, the school is over, kids from class third and fifth are carrying their satchels, satchels and running back home. But the kids of fourth class are so absorbed in the story that they tell Lakshmi Shankar, Sir, please make it long. Don't abruptly shorten the story. And that's when Lakshmi Shankar says that today I learned my first lesson from the children. A teacher keeps alive because a good teacher learns from his or her own students every single day. Now for the next 10 days, there were stories and stories, nothing else. And the kids who were so rowdy, um, who, who were making so much of noise, they, they, they just sit in a circle very quietly. If anyone amongst the kids makes a noise, the others shut him up. Go out and make a noise. Don't disturb our story. There's something innately life-giving going on. It's not the cane of the teacher. It's not the punishment of the teacher which deters them. There's something life-giving, something which attracts them. The stories are a way to the children's heart. Now, after 10 days, uh, the children once again so tell us more stories, more stories. And this news about that the fourth class kids are having a ball of a time. They don't have to mug up mathematical tables, arithmetic tables. They don't have to mug up Sanskrit shlokas. Now this spreads like wildfire in the whole school. And the children of class three and class five are now demanding stories of their teachers. Now this brings about a kind of a, it shakes up the foundations, the power, power structure in the school. Uh, the teachers, the other teachers, uh, uh, don't take it very lightly. They say, who is this new recruit? Our, our students don't want to obey us. They want to hear more stories. The other thing is that every story which the children read, they enact it out in a play the next day. Uh, well, 11th day, kids demand more stories. And Lakshmi Shankar says, kids, I'm sorry. All the stories which I had read as a child, I have recounted them all to you. But you see, there are 50 children in our class. And it's absolutely nonsensical that all of you have the same textbooks. So this year, you don't buy new textbooks. And you give me money, each child will give me money for three textbooks. And you love these stories, I will go and buy picture storybooks, three storybooks, for every child. So in the 1920s, this great visionary, Gijubai, uh, he sweeps away all the boring state textbooks and starts a classroom library of delightful children's books, 150 of them. His dream was uh, not three boring state textbooks, but 150 books. Much later, there was a slogan by the Brazilian educator Paulo Freire, who said, not the word, but the world. And this is what Grijubai was actually practicing in the 20s. So, so he starts a classroom library. Now, when the children enacted out their place, there was often a lot of din and noise in his classroom. Children laughing, jumping, boisterous. And all the other teachers were waiting for this occasion. They all ganged up and they went to the principal and they reported, sir, we're not able to discharge our duties because there's so much of noise in this class. And then the principal holds up Lakshmi Shankar. Now this can't carry on. I've got to take the whole school along with me and there can't be noise in your class because other teachers are unable to teach. At that time, Lakshmi Shankar was teaching kids about physical geography metamorphic rocks, sedimentary rocks. Now these are such long fangled words that children 
um, uh, children did not, could not even pronounce them. They'd never seen a metamorphic rock. They'd never seen a sedimentary rock. No experience. And the children, one child just went to sleep and died. He got so bored stiff. And then Lakshmi Shankar realized, that's not the child's fault. It's my fault. The child has never seen, touched a metamorphic rock. And it is not correct to assume that the child would be interested. So now, from every day onwards, next day onwards, the class was a meeting place for all the kids. They would assemble in the class, they would take a sheet, and they would go out in the field, they would go near the river. And the first thing is that whatever story they had read the previous day, they would enact it out, and then they collected different bits of rock, and stones, and soil, and leaves, and bird eggs, and bird nests, and bird feathers, and medicinal plants. As a matter of fact, it was a natural history tour. Every artifact in their menu, they collected one specimen and brought it back to the classroom. And this made geography much more interesting for him. Now, when, when he came to teaching grammar, now someone has, someone has said that if you wish to, if you want to make children disinterested in any language, start with grammar. Children would, would hate that language. But Kichubai had a way of putting everything into a play form. So when he comes to verbs, he takes little slips of paper, 50 of them, he writes laughing, eating, jumping, sleeping. And those slips are folded and put in a basket. Each child has to come pick up a slip, open this, and enact it out. And the other children have to decipher it. And this makes it so much interesting. They would take two weeks to finish their verbs, but now they finish it in two days and understood it very, very deeply. But well, the whole year is coming to an end and it's going to be the school's annual day, which is a big thing in the life of a school. Um, so all the other teachers are preparing for the annual day and Lakshmi Shankar tells the principal, sir, I'm not going to participate in the annual day because I think it is not good for children. Um, the, the principal is very angry. He said, well, every, it's a tradition to celebrate the annual day. For years we've been doing it. All the teachers are participating and you have to do it. Well, Lakshmi Shankar agrees on one condition. He says, sir, as I've run my class for 364 days, I will run it on the last day too. I will not rig up anything artificial for the occasion. And let the chief guest decide whether I was in the right path or I had gone astray. So, well, a lot of preparations are going on. There are these... Uh, uh, there's a red copper, there is a band to welcome the chief guest. And who is the chief guest? The chief guest is the same district education officer who had given Lakshmi Shankar the permission for the experiment. And, uh, well, he's, uh, he sits down and on the stage a child comes in and he starts reciting a Sanskrit shloka. He recites one or two lines, but the child has obviously not understood what he's saying and he forgets it. And then he's red in the face. He's perspiring. And this is the kind of a scene which is quite common in most schools. He sees all this and then he goes to Lakshmi Shankar's class. Where the children are actually enacting out a play of a story they had read the previous day. These 364 days this is exactly what the children did. And they had become extremely good with words. And but there was no fear on their faces. If they understood the story, they said, we don't need to mug up the dialogues. We can, we can improvise them on the spot. They become very friendly with words. And so there was no fear. They were happily enacting out the play. And then the chief guest, the district education officer, sees their Museum of Natural History. At that time, the NCRT was not founded. So there was no subject like environmental education, but this is precisely what the children were doing. 
the education officer is thrilled by all the leaves and the stones and the, and the different soil varieties which the kids had collected. And in the end, he says, all that which I saw outside was a farce. This is true education. So this is the most wonderful story, most inspiring story of the Devaswapna by Gijubai Badeka. Now, this book has been published by the National Book Trust into 11 Indian languages. And every teacher should read this book because this certainly is India's greatest contribution to education. Uh, towards the, in this, you would find a link to this book because this book is in the free public domain. There is a link where you can read this in English. Thank you very much.